Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for listening to me. Uh, I'm Romain Gambier. I'm the CEO of uh, Ghostfrog, which is a French company, recent French company we created last year. So uh, at Ghostfrog, we call ourselves as a hybrid game studio uh, because we've got a strong experience, playful uh, experience on uh, classical games like uh, board games, card games, dice games. And uh, we mix this kind of games with technology uh, because we believe that uh, the game is the best way to break techni technological barriers. So uh, what we do exactly, we create games and then we offer to people. It's like uh, experiences. Uh, we already created uh, two games by now. The first is uh, TeamPix. It's available in store. Uh, it's a party game which is based on selfie and uh, cards. So you have to make people uh, guess words using selfie and using your, your smartphone. And uh, we also created a second uh, game, which is called Heritage. Uh, so it's very, very new, and uh, it's not yet on the market. We're looking for an editor for this game. Uh, Heritage is um, a classic board game, and uh, we use uh, virtual reality uh, to uh, try to extend capacity of the game, uh, mix it with cards. So we had um, uh, the support of CNC for this game, the Centre National du Cinéma et de l'Image Animée. And uh, we also uh, won the first prize at uh, Imaginov last year, uh, Imaginov uh, Contest. So as you can see, at Ghost Frog, we use game to experience technologies. Uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, we also do a bit of con consulting for uh, big companies that want to use game for gamification or serious games. So the question is why now I'm here? <laughs> uh, because blockchain is not part of the technology we use for now. But I use for blockchain for myself and I'm very interested in blockchain since uh, the appearance of uh, Ethereum, Ethereum blockchain. Uh, the first time I, I saw Ethereum, I had in mind something that came up with a strong, strong power, and uh, it was this. It was quite simple. When I was young, I got the huge collection of uh, Magic the Gathering cards. I don't know, maybe some of you uh, did so. I spent a lot uh, of time, a lot of money uh, in this card and in this game. I was really, really involved in this game. And by now, I don't have any more cards. I lost most of them. and. Uh, what I was thinking first with blockchain is, if those cards were in the blockchain today, I would be able to give these cards to my children. And then they will be able to have fun with my cards I was playing when I was young. So that was the first idea I had about blockchain gaming. It was just a simple way to use already existing games and put them into the blockchain. But this is not blockchain gaming. This is just a classical game that you put into the blockchain. It's not very, very interesting. Uh, so I started to look around and see maybe some people are developing good ideas around blockchain gaming and maybe someone will have a, a good idea. And even uh, if I was in my mind the first having this idea, we all know that when you got a good idea on the internet, well, at least a thousand persons have the same ID and uh, are working at the same ID in the same time as you. So, by surfing on the web, uh, I finally found one thing that showed me that it was possible. I don't have to explain, I think, for most of you, CryptoKitties. Uh, it was really the first time we saw a crypto game. So, most of people don't think it's a game. It's much more collectible. We just define this as a trading game. Okay. And so if you just look around, what CryptoKitty did was just put a big spotlight on blockchain community and blockchain capability. And of course, it also bring uh, NFT with uh, ERC721, which was a new uh, possibility in tele technological way of use blockchain. So when I saw those crypto kitties, 
I went to see my, my friend uh, Maxime Vola, which is a CTO at, uh, at Gosfrog. And uh, we started to talk about all this blockchain technology. And we started to think, is there a way um, for us, for Gosfrog, to push experiences with this technology? And how can we, how can we do this? So uh, after talking a lot, we finally decided to try to test the ID with our team. So we just bring up a meeting. I, I made a nice PowerPoint presentation. And we said, OK, we're going to show this to Ghostfrog team. So uh, let's ask to the team. Let's see what they think about all this. And here you can see the reaction we got. Uh, very, very astonishing reaction. Because uh, two things were really obvious uh, during this presentation. First thing is people have really uh, misunderstand of the blockchain. And most of the time, blockchain means Bitcoin, and that's all. That's the first thing. And the second thing is one important uh, element that's quite showing up with crypto cases, it's that they are so cute. So by this way, we realize that crypto kitties just bring us uh, a nice way to look at the blockchain. But blockchain itself is still very, very complicated. What's the problem? What's wrong with the blockchain? First, we have to see that it's very, very young technology. If, even if Bitcoin is uh, just about 10 years old, uh, we can see that Ethereum has only three years. So it's very, very young. And we see it's evolving very, very fast. So we need to adapt, and it's not that easy. The second thing is it's a very complex technology. Complex means we have to really study many, many parts of the, of the technology and adapt the way of doing games within this technology. Third point is it's very obscure. Why? Because for now, blockchain is for developers, only for developers and for crypto community, crypto enthusiasts that already know the technology. So we don't have to explain. Either you know, either you don't know. If you know, you're in. If you don't know, well, too bad for you. And the last point that was still a problem for us, it's still pricey. When we talk about blockchain, we always talk about a price, a cost, and something you have to pay. So. Our conclusion about all this is, OK, we have to have some work to do. We need to explain blockchain before being able to use it really fully. So after that, we said, OK, let's take a look at the market. Because we know it's complicated. But how many people have crypto assets? Can, uh, can we target this, uh, these people? So we are a French company. French tech and uh, say, OK, let's take a look at the friends. Who have crypto assets in France? And uh, when we look at the numbers, well, uh, it's not very promising. You can see that it's not the majority that uh, owns crypto assets. So uh, maybe it's uh, French-centric, French-specific. Let's take a look around the world. But numbers around the world are not better you can see that it's not the majority that earns or no crypto assets. So this was very, very good for us, because we said, OK, if we just follow this target, we're going to go into the wall. It's not, it's not right. But our, our work at Ghostfog is to create games. We create game funny experiences. And why? Well, simple, because who are gamers? Gamers are a big part of the population. Most of you already played a game, either classic board games, either video games. We all have, at one moment in our life, the possibility to play games and to have fun. So the conclusion of our first uh, analysis was quite simple. We've got two different profiles. We've got crypto community, 
from one side, and gamers from the other side. The crypto community, for now, is essentially web-based application, dApps. They are accustomed to pay to play, which means if you want to enter an experience, a game or anything else, you have to pay. And you pay in cryptocurrencies. That's very, very specific to crypto community. On the other side, you've got gamers. The mainstream access for gamers is mobile games. And the best way to get a huge audience is to create a free-to-play game. All those games are available in stores, Apple Store, uh, Play Store, and all of that is paid with euro or dollars. So it is really, really two different profiles we've got to merge. And we started to think, how, how can we make bridge be between these two communities? Because our, our objective is that gamers become crypto users. We don't want crypto community to become gamers. We, we don't have any interest in this. If we want blockchain to grow, we need gamers to go to crypto. So we started this thing and we created Etherrush. So Etherrush, what, what's Etherrush? It's a space meaning game inspired by blockchain. And it inspired by blockchain. It's not a fully blockchain game. Because we realized that these two profiles are too different. So what we imagine is what two levels of gameplay in the same game. Level one is a game that's addressed to crypto community. It's a crypto game and it's built on Ethereum. It's quite simple to use and it matches on every, every fit that a crypto community uh, attends. Level two will be a free-to-play game which will be linked into blockchain. And our idea is to, with the level two, to bring gamers to the level one. So the first step is to create the level one. And the idea we got is to create a world based on blockchain. So we take all the benefits of blockchain by using ERC20 and ERC721. The world we created is Callisto. So the idea was quite simple. It's a space exploration program. Uh, a company can explore Callisto and find resources on it. So how we did it? It's quite simple. We decided to create a, a, a planet where we can find different areas. All these areas uh, can be bought directly by uh, players. You've got plots, you just can select the plots, buy it, and then it's your own plot. It's your property. And you can have any plots as you want. Here you can see the screenshot of our current DAP because we have open pre-sale uh, in the end of August. So this is what you can do right now in Etherrush. You can buy plots and then we, when we launch the game, we'll be able to explore and exploit your plots. So what do we mean by exploit your plots? Your plots will be ERC721. So we will have possibility to enhance it. You have the possibility to, to make it grow, and you have possibility also to mine it. Meaning with me, you will have to dig inside the, under the surface, and then you will find resources. It's a quite simple game. We didn't want to go too far in the gameplay, because we did know that crypto community is not for, uh, necessarily uh, gamers. So we just imagine a very simple game. And there are many ways for crypto users to make profit in, uh, in Etherrush. First, if they mine, they will find resources. But also, they can upgrade. They can build factories uh, to mine faster, to mine deeper. Well, they can, they got the ability to change the behavior of the plot and to have more chance to win. What we also created is a collection of resources. This is what you can find on Callisto. 
This is all the resources we will be able to access. The left column is ores which will be used by uh, landowners to upgrade their plots. So by meaning, they will find resources they can use to enhance their, their property. And the two column left, they are direct rewards, which means when they find this kind of resources, they will be able to go to the store and exchange them directly against Ether. So it's a direct profit for them. Of course, if uh, a land owner doesn't want to play the game, it will always have possibility to sell the plot on the marketplace. And then there will be other players that can buy the plate and then mine and take their chance. And as you can see, on the, on the, this, uh, these resources, there are a few resources that are still unknown. And that's where the gamers go into part. This is the first level. First level which will be launched in November. November, uh, and we will present fully game at the Game Connection uh, at the end of uh, next month in Paris. Once we launch this game, uh, we hope that landowners will understand that if they want to reach those resources, they have to go to dig uh, deeper under the surface. And that's when they will need help. And that's where we go to level two of the game, the second level, bring gamers to Callisto. Our idea is quite simple. We create a mobile game, a free-to-play mobile game. We won't use any cryptocurrencies. It will be a fully advanced game with real gaming mechanism, and it will have direct blockchain interaction, which means when you will be playing on the game, on the mobile game, in fact, you will be mining a plot of a landowner on the first level. So, by this way, Landowners will need help of mobile gamers to enhance their chance to win. The idea is not only to bring to owners more chance to win ETH. Of course, they, that's one of the possibilities. But our aim by creating this second level game is to push gamers to become landowners because when they will realize that they're working on a real universe in blockchain, then they will think and say, why, why am I working for someone else? I could work for myself. And the idea is just as simple as take a wallet, buy a plot, and then you will be able to mine for yourself. And better, if you want to, you can call your friends, tell everyone to install the app on, your, on the mobile, and everyone will join the game by mining the same plot. So by this way, we imagine a bridge between crypto community and gamers community, which means that we'll have to exchange. We'll have a platform for contracts where landowners will call for gamers, and it will be fully transparent. And it's very important to see that in the second level of the game, we won't have any cryptocurrency. What we want is to touch as many people as possible. So it will be a classical free-to-play game available in any store. The idea behind level two is just to give gamers the will, the envy, to put the step, take a wallet, and become a crypto active user. That's our aim. That's why we launched the first level before. Second level, we would like to launch the game in June of next year. But it will also mainly depend on how it's successful level one. That's why I wanted to show. So it's OK for me. Thank you, everyone. And since I've got a few seconds, I would like to thank a lot, uh, B2XMEN and uh, Ubisoft, for taking the initiative of this uh, Blockchain Game Summit, which is a great event, and uh, I would like to thank them uh, a lot. Thank you.